Hello everyone, dear subscribers and viewers of the channel. Vitaly Sokolov is with you. In this video, we will start to get acquainted with graphic primitives with which we can draw simple graphics. And before we start, subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up and write a comment. You can also help the channel financially, the details are in the description under the video. Thank you all in advance. The simplest graphical primitive is the dot. That is, it is a colored pixel. The point method is used to display a point on the screen. The X and Y coordinates are given in parentheses. The GL Engine 2D engine allows you to set the size of the points. For this, the point size command is used. The size is set in pixels. Specifying a large size will result in a square on the screen, because, by default, pixels are square. But if you want the pixels to become round, you can enable point smoothing with the point smooth command. The parentheses indicate the true value if anti-aliasing is enabled and the points will be round. Or the false value is specified if anti-aliasing is disabled and the pixels are displayed square. To set the color of a pixel, use the set color command. For digits separated by commas are indicated in brackets. Digit values can be from 0 to 1, including real values. The first three digits indicate the three colors, red, green, and blue, in RGB format that, when mixed together, produce the final color. And the fourth digit, denotes the alpha channel, transparency. That is, with this figure you can adjust the transparency value. Values can be from zero, when the primitive is completely invisible, to one, when it is completely visible. Intermediate transparency options are specified through a dot. There is also a second option for working with the set color method, in which a variable of the TGL color type is declared. Through a dot, this variable specifies the value of three colors and an alpha channel. And after that the variable is passed to the set color method. This approach can be convenient, for setting colors in one place as variables, so as not to look for places to change each color. But in this case, make such variables global, by declaring them in the uses or public section. To draw a line, call the line. On the sides, you need to specify the coordinates of two points between which the line will be drawn. That is, the values of the x, y coordinates of the first point, and then the second, are indicated with a comma. You can control the line width with the line width command. The value of the line width in pixels is indicated in parentheses. The color of the lines is also affected by the set color command. And if you need to draw lines with a gradient fill, that is, so that the color of the line changes smoothly from one color on one side to another color on the other. You can use the line grad command. In brackets, just like a regular line, the coordinates of two points are indicated, but after them two colors are indicated in the TGL color format, that is. Two variables of the TGL color type are needed. This is the color of the start and end points, between which there will be a smooth color change. It is also possible to draw a curved line using the bolt command. The parentheses indicate the coordinates of the start and end points. Unfortunately, sinuosity cannot be controlled flexibly, at the moment, for example, by specifying the maximum deviation, there are no settings for this. But for simple use, the implemented version is quite suitable. If it is not enough, you can implement the desired procedure yourself. You can also achieve an interesting effect if you add the output of a winding line to the timer or restart its drawing manually. With each subsequent output of the line, its bends will randomly change. Therefore, if you increase the number of frames, it will become similar to the effect of lightning or a powerful electric charge. And, finally, I propose to consider drawing arrows. There is an arrow command for this. The coordinates of two points, start and end, are indicated in brackets, then the size of the arrow is indicated, then the angle of inclination of the lines at the arrow is indicated. At the end the arrow is filled in, solid. If set to true, the arrow will be filled with the color from the set color command. If the false value is specified, the arrow will not be painted over. But in my case, it didn't work, perhaps it will be fixed in the future for Delphi. That's all for me. If this video was useful and interesting for you, put your thumbs up under the video and write a comment. Also subscribe to the channel to be aware of the release of new videos. And in the description under the video there are details for financial support of the channel. Your help is very important. Vitaly Sokolov was with you. See you in the next videos.